Welcome to the upstreamlife.com, a podcast that celebrates business transformation in India and around the world. I have with me today Udwal Singh, the CEO and president of Infinity Learn. It's a startup that sprung out of the Sri Chaitanya Educational Institutions. We're going to discuss that in a bit. The reason they're in this segment is because the ed tech landscape in India is vast. There are over 230 million students in the K-12 segments and over 40 million in higher education. That's a number you can't beat worldwide. No wonder there's so many startups. But let me tell you the reality. A few startups may have achieved unicorn status, but meeting the needs of the education market cannot be done by one or two startups. That's where Infinity Learn matters, because they believe that it has to be a partnership with the academic institutions and startups, and that's how they're going to scale up. Uh, let me tell you more about Infinity Learn. It enhances learner performance. It helps a student to learn at their own pace, and there are gamified experiences. It's amazing for teachers also. So Ujwal uh, is the CEO, of course, of the company. He's going to tell me about the state of education in India and also how Infinity Learn can play a major role in the ecosystem in this decade. Ujwal in the past has worked with the Tatas, NIT, and in Pearson. Ujwal, pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate for you, Vishal, to invite me to this uh, podcast. You know, I've been covering education for well over 20 years now. And the fact that I take pride that I was one of the few journalists in the early days to coin the phrase educated, but not employable, right? But that is true. And we've all, we've all been part of an education system in, you know, I want to start with your history a little bit and then go on to the impact Infinity Learn's making. You, you started, I know your professional career, you know, you started off with the Tatas and you've come a long way since. Let's start off with where you began from your early childhood and, you know, getting into the Tatas and from there on NIT and then Pearson, right? Let's talk about, and then how did you realize that you have to do this with Infinity Learn? Uh, can I have a little bit of that information? please? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I, early years, I grew up in West Bengal and uh, the first language which I learned was actually Bengali. Um, for a very long time, even though I ancestrally belonged to a place very near to Varanasi, but uh, didn't know Hindi till grade six or grade seven. Um, but my father got transferred and slowly and gradually towards the hinterland, I learned Hindi. I did my graduation, MBA, and finally landed up with Tata's. I think they're the best company to start with because that trains you, teaches you so many great values, systems. But uh, quite early, uh, you know, my first job, I was like a periphery of education, but education because it was like, you have to sell computers, but who will buy computers if you don't know how to operate computers? And that's how my journey started with uh, training and said, okay, fine. Let me let me start getting to that side of the business. And, you know, that time used to call it Tulek, Tata Unisys Limited Education Center. Thank you so much. Really appreciate for you, Vishal, to invite me to this uh, podcast. You know, I've been covering education for well over 20 years now. And the fact that I take pride that I was one of the few journalists in the early days to coin the phrase educated but not employable, right? But that is true. And we've all, we've all been part of an education system in, you know, I want to start with your history a little bit and then go on to the impact Infinity Learn's making. You, you started, I know your professional career, you know, you started off with the Tatas and you've come a long way since. Let's start off with where you began from your early childhood and, you know, getting into the Tatas and from there on NIT and then Pearson. Right, let's talk about, and then how did you realize that you have to do this with Infinity Learn? Uh, can I have a little bit of that information? please? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I, early years, I grew up in West Bengal. And uh, the first language which I learned was actually Bengali. Um, for a very long time, even though I ancestrally belonged to a place very near to Varanasi, but uh, didn't know Hindi till grade six or grade seven. Um, but my father got transferred and slowly and gradually towards the hinterland, I learned Hindi. I did my graduation MBA and finally landed up with Tata's. I think they're the best company to start with because that trains you, teaches you so many great values, systems. But uh, quite early, uh, you know, my first job, I was like a periphery of education, but education because it was like, you have to sell computers, but who will buy computers if you don't know how to operate computers? 
And that's how my journey started with uh, training and said, okay, fine. And then that interest grew saying that, you know, that's great that I'm doing good, but uh, can I go back to India and start doing something more interesting? And that's when Sri Chaitanya opportunity came saying that, can we start a company, which is an ed tech company to bring some efficacy in education? You know, launching an ed tech product is one thing. And trying to say that how an education product, which is taught online, can create the same impact and the magic for the learner, which was happening in brick and mortar, is a, is a very challenging statement. And very few people actually are talking about it. We took that as a challenge and started. So that's the genesis of my journey and birth of Infinity Learn. That's fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you set this context. And since this is a global podcast also, I want you to tell me the state of Indian education uh, over the over a period of three, uh, three, three decades of your experience now. It's important to capture that in context. Like you said, you know, there was a time when we didn't even have computers. We didn't even know how to operate them, although they were there. And we had to train people. And then we have leapfrogged. I think we've leapfrogged the laptop era and straight away gone to the mobile phone era, smartphone era, not even the mobile era. Right. And that changes the whole dynamics of education. If you could set that context for this audience globally, and then let's go into infinity then. And, and you know, when, when I used to say earlier, I worked for education in early, late 90s, when I started working, people would say, what? So mm. that was, what, what do, are you a teacher? Uh, saying that I work for education was very difficult to explain sometimes. But I think three things have changed over, over the year. Um, Access has gone up. So I'm saying brick and mortar first, uh, a little bit of privatization, decentralization of uh, knowledge sharing started. A lot of companies came in, they started centers, they, they said, okay, you can also learn some things which is beyond your school curriculum. So I think the first change happened there. I think the second change happened when digital education entered inside the classroom. So there were smart boards and how, how teachers, and it's a huge change for teachers to adapt to a tool which was not, not the blackboard, but the whiteboard and then the smart boards. That, that brought in a lot of, a lot of interesting aspects of education. First time uh, children were able to visualize some things which they have only looked at in a black and white book, particularly if you have studied in India and, uh, and maybe a government school or even a small private school. Most of the times books were in black and white. I think the third wave happened when uh, parents took charge and said that school education is still continuing and they have multiple you know, priorities overall, but can I help my child? And that's how the business to consumer, the B2C started moving further. And then they parents started spending little more money outside the school system to education system. And slowly and gradually what has happened is that school system uh, is still maybe, maybe a few years behind and consumers have gone a few years ahead. So now the dilemma for the teacher, and you know, I, I have a lot of respect for teacher because I think that's a very difficult task for a parent and during COVID, everybody would have experienced for parents to manage one or two children for five, six, eight hours is a difficult task. Teachers are managing 40, 50 children inside a classroom, all varied kinds, uh, different you know, uh, places they come from, different values they have to manage them inside a classroom. And then sometimes you know, they know so much more because some, some of them have access to information now knowledge point of view, they know so much more for the teacher to continuously be in that environment is not an easy thing. I agree with you. And in fact, I think Infinity Learn is making teachers come back to uh, the fore, right? Today, teachers can make a lot more money teaching on forums such as yours, or platforms, let me use the word platforms. True. I will get into that in a bit. I, I'm really curious about how the teacher economy is changing. And I'm glad you also said in the early days when you got, get, get into education, they'd say, oh, are you a teacher? Because the teachers are really paid very less. And uh, in fact, they still continue to uh, be paid less. And I think people like you are changing the game. Let's talk about a few things of the genesis of Infinity Learn. Uh, when did Sushma, Seema and uh, Sridhar and you get together? 
uh, how did how did you guys conceptualize this whole thing? Because you just gave me a one liner in my previous question, how Infinity Learn was born. I'd like to flesh this out, uh, but to take a bet in an ecosystem where there's there are people who are already incumbents and heavily private equity funded, right? So I wanted to know your thoughts on this. And it's a brilliant move that you did because you already had a great base. Great question. So it was very early stage. Uh, one of Sridhar's friends reached out to me and I was with Pearson and I was largely driving the digital piece for Pearson. You know, it's a publishing company, but I was largely heading the K-12 and ELT product models for digital products. And then um, he reached out uh, to me saying that it's a common conversation. This is a large education group. He wants to do a little understand that how during COVID, you know, one large group can learn from other. I was just casual discussion and uh, over that casual discussion, I was telling him that, you know, these are the few things which you can look at. Uh, so he, I still remember in July, 2020, I traveled to Hyderabad. I was in Bangalore then because COVID had happened and lockdown and just about lockdown open. I took multiple paths because Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, <laughs> multiple paths and came. And I spent uh, six hours with Dr. Rao. Dr. Rao is the founder of uh, Shri Chaitanya Group. Uh, such a fascinating journey. Somebody who, he was in UK and Iran and came and started one school and how he expanded schools. I really aligned with the thought process of uh, making it good and then scaling it. It is not about just making it good and keeping it niche. Um, over the months, we first thought that, oh, we need to change the school education. But finally, we realized that, you know, changing the school education is also focused around Sri Chaitanya students only. But uh, if we can make any impact, we should impact both sides. Definitely Sri Chaitanya students, but students outside Sri Chaitanya as well. And that's how uh, then Sushma and me, largely she from the family side is my uh, main person to go to. Uh, we spent almost a few months sitting together thinking that how should we uh, build this together, how should we aspire for it, the speed, because there's a lot of learning available. Internally, we call it secret sauce, but uh, you you can't uh, get 36 years of school education in a nutshell. So we met teachers, we met principals, we met students, students who have qualified and top us in IIT to students who did not do very well and why they did not do very well. Uh, first two, two and a half months was all about just chatting and discussions and going back to the drawing board and thinking, if we want to make a promise that Infinity Learn will be different than anybody else, uh, and everybody will like to do that, why will you start a new company if you can't create a differentiation? I think uh, that largely came from uh, having conversations and communication and learning from the stakeholders overall. Uh, I thought I still say that, you know, the amount of learning the teachers give you, uh, I don't think many people can give. You're not even learners uh, because they're young. For them to articulate their challenges, for them to articulate, uh, they sometimes have different words, but uh, learning from teachers was amazing. And what was the feedback? Uh, well, they said that, look, uh, we can't handle it at scale or can we have technology that can allow us to scale our learning? Uh, was that the idea at the time? So largely there are two things that... Um, Mostly, you know, uh, digital education per se, people perceived, uh, I'm not going to name any video conferencing tool, but perceived that, oh, put, put children and teacher on a video conferencing tool and education will happen. They and So many uh, of them started startups like that. Yeah. I know that. Yes. So, and teachers found it very difficult. This is, you know, I, I am in my class of 40 and I can... I can maneuver my class. This is like a magic going around saying that, okay, now we will, you know, actually start doing an activity. Then we will go back and do two questions, then come back and look at it. If the class has made mistake, where will you learn the concept? If I have a smart board, I'll go and watch a video, whatever I'm doing. And here I'm stuck. I'm, I'm unable to, you know, maneuver the class my way. Uh, I think that came out very, very clearly. Second, uh, engagement scores were so low, so low, and it's still very low for 
most of the mass classrooms are 200 people sitting actually nobody is listening somebody is on the phone somebody I, i've had horrible experiences where uh, i go to universities and talk mm. to people and some of the parents because i do these shows they come to me and say that uh, my kids not attended two years of college yeah 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 it's, it's true because they have not been able to engage very well so i think uh, as a society we know and we understand some of these challenges but just that it takes little hard work and just said that it little, you know going inside people found easy to you know integrate one tool and then say okay i'm ready for doing online classes and i should start and take now i think that was the uh, crux but students didn't enjoy uh, these classes they they were missing the experience this including saying that if you if you look at the classrooms we have seen that teacher will ask a question six hands will go up ma'am ma'am ma here you know uh, the excitement is negligible so how do you build those excitement if i'm winning if i'm losing i'm i'm competing i'm competing with myself i'm competing with somebody else so i think uh, those things were very clear and evident saying that if you don't build you know technology for learning then normal technology for video conferencing can't be copy pasted so i think that was the first thing which we got to second uh, everybody said that you know it takes an extra effort to achieve a high stake exam uh, and and the the concern for country wide most of the people is is that if the environment is so relaxed chances that overall standards will come down as you are saying that i went to college and did not actually study for two years that that was supposed to happen at a large scale so testing can't be relaxed because end of the day the student has to go how do you monitor the testing how do you proctor the testing how do you ensure that you know you have an environment where the child feels the same amount of uh, speed and accuracy pressure so that he doesn't say hey, if i give this test if i don't attempt this question what happens because you need an analytical bend of mind to say why i could not do it why i could do it so i think these are some of the early stage problems which we heard and we started jumped into solving those now i want to know now i'm curious to know i know you, it's a app you download the app you pay 1 rupee there's a live chat i can be any student i can put in my doubts and they will be answered i'm just guessing that Uh, yeah. I would love to know what are the different modules that you offer training. I know the, the I know JW would be very big for you. That would be there, and also knowing the schools, it could be CBSE. But if you could lay down uh, the kind of material that you put out to students, and I mean, this is democratized, of course, not just for kids in Chaitanya, but for others also. How does the platform work? If a parent signs up, or if the student signs up? So uh, we presently work in. uh four grades 9 to 12 most of the time the learner signs up uh they might be using parents phone but they learner signs up the two ways to enter to the system one is the easiest system that okay i can ask a doubt and they will solve it for us so that's that's a very transactional thing that's a easy to access and understand the quality of our product but that was not built for that purpose built for a purpose which is a little different uh, so we call it a 4a model and in which you know when you come you first given assessment so there is a pre assessment kind we we take a small test and we align the learner to say that how are you doing now this is your previous knowledge how are you doing once you once you go through that then we ask you to subscribe for a course say neat or j double e uh a 12 months 6 months one month depending on when are you coming then you will be assigned to a batch and in that batch you go through some amount of teacher led or a guided learning once you go through the guided learning then you come and you are given some sample materials or the study material through which you do the self learning but still we think that you know the student would need help 12 o'clock in the night and our doubts actually picks up at 10 o'clock the night and goes up to 1 o'clock at in the night so we we realized that you know we are now dealing with nocturnals and uh, we have to change ourselves to adapt to them so we we started uh, you know huge amount of uh, ai engine plus the faculty because sometimes even 
AI engines don't work that perfectly, and students may not be happy. And it is it is that when I need help, can you help, give me help? It is not that oh, come back after eight hours and I will solve your question. So I think that's the critical difference. So you first do a pre-assessment, followed by make them attend a live class, followed by give them some amount of self-learning, and then provide them support when most of the other people are not providing. That's how the learning happens. But but it is not necessary that everybody has to flow the same flow. Some people say, hey, you know, I don't need live class. I don't need any learning. I just need testing because I'm doing a coaching somewhere else or I'm learning somewhere else. That's fine with us. It says come enter doubts. If you know that, okay, you are doing good in doubts. There are, you know, 100,000 students from Chaitanya is giving a test. And would you like to participate and compete with them in this test? Yeah, I would like to do that. So they just come and take the test along with us. And uh, that's the that's the fun part is that uh, let the learner choose what they want rather than forcing them. Now, this is the only way you can learn. Uh, there's far more customized modules available for them to choose and start the journey. OK, so there's JWE, which is also for that, you know, 12 standard plus, right? Uh, and they each parent wants them to prepare very well for that. By the way, guys, they also have a doubts app. Is that an infinity doubts app? Yeah. Right. Go download that too. Right. So tell me about uh, the JWE program. Is it, is it again, uh, specialized tutoring for the JWE program and the NEET uh, program also? Yes. So uh, we, we focused uh, and C Chaitanya is well known. Uh, just to give you an idea that there are 42,000 students who are among all the IITs at this point of time. Big 10,000 students are from Sichatanya. So we have almost, and then we have a almost a similar number for NEET between AM, SIPMAR, FMC, or across the top colleges. Um, we have more than 25% of the students are from Sichatanya. So we have shown a great success. Yes, we were earlier a brand which was far focused on Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, parts of Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. But now we are spreading across country and digital has helped us to move even outside India. But uh, you ask JWE and NEET. Uh, so usually JWE people start preparing when they have passed grade 10th for a two year program or some would come for come to us for a one year program. And so as for in NEET also. And, and usually we will have a full planning. So we'll do an assessment of all the students understand where they are and they are placed with a, a, a very qualified faculty. Uh, but for us, guided learning is, is very important, but not the only thing. The self-learning gives us a lot of data that where is this child struggling and bring it back into the classroom to say that you are struggling or you're facing a problem like this. How as a class we are doing, is it an individual problem or is it a class problem? And then try to solve it. Even if that means that few students on multiple batches have to be brought into a specific topic, say algebra, the writing students are not doing very well among multiple batches. We bring them in, we try to make one batch, do a two or three classes, get the standards up, and then we redistribute them so that, you know, the benefit of technology is that you can create cohorts the way you want. You don't have to follow a same path for everybody. I think that's the biggest uh, benefit vis-a-vis -vis the brick and mortar. And if you're not using the technology for that, then uh, you know we are using the technology, but that's not optimum there. No, that's a fantastic point. And I, I think students uh, listening to this must watch it. I also want to ask you about your own acquisition spree. I remember last year when I was reading and uh, I remember you acquired uh, teacher. Teacher, yeah. Then... As we speak, you're acquiring another company called Don't Memorize. And it's a fantastic point that you know our parents would say, don't memorize. I think yeah. our generation, they'd say memorize and pass. <laughs> but things have changed, right? Yeah. Right. So what you know, are you on an acquisition spree, a partnership spree? Uh, you already have a student base. So you're going to integrate multiple technologies. Your thoughts on the API economy, because you can integrate a lot more partners to this. Yeah. Go on, let's start off with the acquisition that you made. So uh, definitely we, we realize that if we try to do everything ourselves, we won't be able to do. So we built a very, at the beginning, while we were putting the strategy in Jan, Feb 2021, we said build by partner will be our strategy. 
the only thing which we are saying that how much to build how much to buy and how much to partner and we realize that anything which is easy acquisition but more ac than acquisition easy to integrate because sometimes acquisitions uh, don't get integrated and then you know it falls apart and doesn't work the same way so easy to integrate we'll try to acquire uh, something which we can't achieve we'll try to partner rest will build ourselves i'm going to give a give example so a uh, teacher is a very strategic thought process that we wanted to launch doubt we wanted to enroll a lot of teachers and uh, it was a very uh, you know simple thought process if you let's find a company which is which can help us fast track our journey to bring a base through which you know teacher onboarding teacher selection becomes very easy and that's why we just thought our teacher there are four young uh, engineering gads who had started that company uh, they were they didn't know how to monetize that at that point of time and we thought it's a great home for them and they thought it's a great home for them as well and they are doing very well as as they have it's almost 7 8 months for us uh don't memorize ganesh and i met 2018 first time it's an youtube event he was an editor you know and i think uh he they, they have done so well they have over the years they have done so well uh they have understood the youtube uh, environment much better than maybe most of the other people in the country uh, a single brand having 2 uh, and 1/2 million users uh, subscribers on youtube is an amazing achievement uh we looked at their content and we really thought this is a very good content for creating supplementary uh, add on because you you don't want to you know every time keep the learner in the academic domain you need to take them on the periphery give an example outside and bring it again inside the learning becomes that that's the objective of don't memorize that you don't have to you yeah you want to memorize newton's third law memorize you want to memorize the formula no problem but understand it and then if you memorize it it will be far easy and that's how we thought that the synergy with don't memorize was amazing because they they brought that thought process which was very aligned with us that how can we expand the uh, curriculum beyond a little bit understanding the curriculum and then try to bring it inside we are in acquisition spree uh, if you say so we 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 will be uh, looking for more partner and we are actually in advanced discussions with few partners as well uh, reason being this is just the basic philosophy of build by partner uh, let me go to partner so you know we are partners to amazon and as an academy is uh, largely supported by sri chaitanya faculty we thought it's a great way to build our credibility if partner like amazon thinks that infinity learn can provide the best quality of curriculum and academic partnership why not to go ahead and prove and say that even though we we collaborate with you and we compete with you but that's fine uh, we 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 are very open to that thought process that keeps us on our toes and that we learn a lot in that partnership i think uh, amazon been a great partner for us in fast tracking our journey on learning on execution particularly i don't think we would have understood customer service any better uh, the amount of learning which we had by partnering with them okay th that's fantastic so i'm glad you said partnerships acquisitions be working with more startup founders uh, i want to ask you a few more questions around infinity learn you have obviously it's born out of an educational institution do you see it self rising uh, pardon me raising private equity money or vc money or because it comes from the a group that's already popular you see it being funded by the group for a while or do you see yourself as a strategic play uh, where you know apart from the growth of school it lo this platform will grow by itself because it's it can already generate cash because students are already signing up we want to become a sustainable revenue growth company and you know yesterday a uh, great question by the way yesterday one of my team members was saying which will we will have to choose between growth and revenue i said and why so and who said that uh why can't we choose both and create a right balance uh why is this philosophy that okay through burning money only we can create growth 
and then revenue is not important. Uh, see, personally, my my value systems are that we want to build a sustainable growth company, a sustainable revenue company. We don't want to. We are we are growing really fast, but we are not growing by just get free learners. Uh, our learners are paid learners. We have hundred thousand paid learners at this point of time. So, and I want to. This is for a lot of entrepreneurs. Whether any, and I, I, I think I inspire myself with you know uh, zero the lot. I think they did a really good job. Uh, I keep reading the founders' articles. I think they are building a good company, and I think we would like at given point of time somebody say the same about us that yeah, this is an edtech company which knew uh, how to build revenue along with growth and not just be one sided as a company. Uh, but your question is that do we go for private equity yes we will go for this business is built for that our aspirations are higher uh, but we want to we want to prove ourselves that there and is a revenue model there's a revenue it's model a yeah and there's a revenue model outside of sichatanya a lot of people think that we are trying to build a revenue model inside of sichatanya no they, we have a revenue model inside sichatanya that's a you can call it a safety net but then on top of it we want to build a 2x or 3x outside of sichatanya so that uh, it becomes uh, uh, you know this can't be a discussion then that uh, what is more important now i'm glad you fleshed it out saying that the although you have the same dna your identities are different the Absolutely. approach the approach will be common learnings but True. will be but will be to scale democratize education and obviously like you made a point earlier increase engagement make it fun right and right. that's amazing and you have a lot of examples from the past to have learned from right we've seen how the edtech platform edtech platforms have played out and that you mentioned that where is education heading i want to ask two things there has been a rush of pr there has been a rush of you know activity to make somebody unicorns or obviously those founders have added immense value a lot of respect for those founders where is education heading with say yes like you said, i i'm going back to the same point you made although there is these platforms engagement has not gone up parents are still dissatisfied parents go given an arm and a leg to get their students educated i have to tell you that uh, your model because you have a safety net also from the other from the edu- from the group i think this allows you time to learn and build fast and then go the private equity route so knowing that context of competition and where you are and the state of education i want you to talk about where do you see it go next 3 years will it be hybrid learning blended learning uh, will you see teachers coming back and being paid very well the creator economy like you said edutubers are doing a great job you see finally you will have great teachers coming on rather than people will say i'll take teaching to that nothing else i think uh, we are at least i'm i'm 22 years in the industry now uh this is the best time best time uh, we are attracting great talent for the first time you know uh, people who come out of i am or an iit four cs yeah this is an industry i want to work for uh, which is uh, kudos to all those people who have done great job over the last 10 15 20 years and uh, build an industry uh, which was like a you know one periphery thing happening on one side uh, a lot of people have worked really hard to build this as an industry now uh, attracted very good people and and your point of teacher particularly you know um, yeah for a very long time teaching was not a chosen profession it was just like an part time or i could not do anything else i meet sometimes people who say that you know i'm um, i passed out of iisc and then i i became a botany teacher in a school or i went to i am and then i became uh, you know a teacher in a school uh, for for teach for india or for any any place not only for us i'm saying which is which is a privilege to see uh, because then that says that the industry has moved overall so a state of education best time to attract talent uh, a lot of people have generated wealth as well so if money is the biggest motivator uh, for some people uh, this is also a great time because ed techs are doing so well uh, but but look at look at learner per se for some time 
Lerner's life has not changed so much. He was earlier inside a classroom with a teacher and some students. Now he's in an online classroom. And then we'll go back to some classrooms. But has, has anything drastically changed for a learner? And, and I think that's the question all of us need to answer more uh, than the periphery. It's just like if you, if you imagine a mandir, uh, temple, inside the temple in the Santam Sintodaram, the, there's a deity and there's a human being who is praying. And that's the, that's the place. That's the place where, you know, actual thing happens. Uh, for, for us, that is the classroom. Yeah, where there's a teacher and there's a learner and it could be any side. So educator could be a learner who is educating an uh, adult and an adult who could be educating a learner. But that's the place where teaching and learning happens. How can we make that better so that the learner enjoys that? I don't think we, we have answered the question that well. As an industry, we have answered that question that well. Over the years, it will happen. Right? There's a lot of people doing great job. A uh, lot of, whether technology, non-technology, both sides are really putting best efforts to say, how can we bring learners back, learning back? And, you know, whosoever is learning should enjoy the way they are learning and they are not forced to learn. I know there were a lot of questions, but I, I think the crux of the matter is, how can we make the learner at the center of our discussion? And if they are learning uh, and the process starts to make it better and better, I think everything else will fall in place. I like what you said about the valuation part as well. You said if people want to make money, it's the best time. <laughs> <laughs> That's about answers that. So, so fantastic. So, you know, I'm also glad that you said that, look, for you, the work is more important than obviously being known as one thing. That's the part of the marketing side. But the impact, like you said, if we haven't answered some fundamental questions on how education is going to change, and that's what you want to do. Great point. So what, what is the role on of stakeholders? Let's, let's start with government. Let's start with uh, businesses. And then let's also talk about what's the role of you know, students in the new era. And how can it be, how can it converge into, converge into saying that education world over is a problem? You go to the US and live in the US, even they are having trouble with the STEM courses that even, for example, courses like BCom, BSc, which used to be so revered, and even BA, you know, people are forgetting their histories. They think it's, it's not important. You know, there's so much that we have not tapped into because everyone's following uh, certain courses, right? How will that change? And in that context, this is more of a sociological question based on your experience as well. For example, you started out of Bengal, you're Hindi native, but you didn't know uh, Hindi till you're in the sixth grade, but that's India for you. It's so beautiful. You can pick up and learn fast on the side. A lot of learning happens away from school as well. How do you see these stakeholders play a role knowing the new education policy is in place? Then obviously, you know, education institutions, parents, VCs, and students. I think, uh, I think government is an enabler. Uh, and, and, and this is for worldwide. Uh, you know, if you go to Brazil, the education system up to the 12th grade examination is fully privatized. And government only comes in the 12th grade and then takes a test. And then they call it systema. So there are multiple systemas across the country and very beautifully run. Uh, produces decent amount of knowledgeable, intelligent people globally. I think uh, government is an enabler in my mind. If they enable it right, uh, education per se will flourish. Uh, control won't let it flourish. The enablement will let it flourish. For me, uh, you know, I, when, I, when I meet parents and uh, they usually say that, you know, my child does not speak. I said, change the question, the child will speak. Said, what do you mean? I said, when a child comes back home, you ask, what did the teacher teach? Change it to say, what did you learn today? You're not doing an evaluation of a teacher. <laughs> you want to know what did your child learn? And he might tell you that, you know, football failed. I actually learned a dribbling trick. And he might learn and he would have learned flying uh, airplanes by paper that day. And trust me, that's such equally good learning. So I think for parents, 
changing that question is a very very important thing the way we grew up our children are not growing up the same way if the way our parents treat us we can't treat our children the same way so we have to change that question and maybe five generations down the line the questions will be very different then you still evaluating the teacher and the school that are they doing their job or not let's focus on can the child learn or what did the child learn today uh for for me the system the school system i think uh, or any learning system have to finally agree that we are all for the learner if the learning is not happening it's just like you know if i if i bought a phone it does everything apart from the fact that it connects to people then it does not do the work so yeah it's a school it's fancy school there's a swimming pool and you know everything is important i'm not who am i to judge what is important not important but finally learning has to happen or you can do the teaching under a banyan tree and that's also is fine but then learning has to happen uh, otherwise uh, everything is is for the child that building the teacher the principal the vice principal so let's bring the learner at the center and discuss around the learner i think that's the missing man i i see a lot of education conferences a lot of places sometimes i go i see people just miss the basic point and that's the most simplest thing uh from the learners point of view i definitely think uh, the world has changed a lot you know attention deficit such a big big issue i was two weeks back in a in hyderabad i was in a school there's a 10th boarders and the school wanted me to come and just meet them they asked one thing which you want us to do i said don't touch the phone you'll do very well <laughs> now that might be not very i agree with you though yeah. i mean yeah. i have a 2 year old daughter yeah and, uh, she's already taking to the phone and i have to tell her but she hates me for taking it away <laughs> hope she doesn't see this podcast 20 years later yeah. and, you know ask me <laughs> did you really do that but uh, but yeah but you're right there's attention deficits are worse uh, people i have real i i keep going to engineering class school so they can't write yeah they can't write they can do videos very well mm. but they can't write and they can't articulate well that's the funny part but but it's funny but but in terms of video presentation they're good i don't know how yeah. i don't know how that's come about yeah and, and yeah and you're right uh, today if you see instagram and some of these people on on various video platforms they are very confident they're doing very well they they present themselves very well or they act very well and maybe that's a new generation as well but <laughs> if you if you want to be part of the education system which is defined whether we like it or not 10th board exam is not based on instagram videos our 10th board examination will be based on a test paper and if you have to perform good on that then you have to let go of instagram for few months and focus on <laughs> that at end of the day a uh, lot of lot of people come and say you know uh, why why do we have to put in this extra effort my choice is if you if you want to be you know ordinary you don't have to leave anything keep continuing but if you want to do extraordinary you have to do extra end of the day there are only 11 players who play in a indian cricket team or a yeah. indian football team yeah. there are millions of people who aspire to be now the difference between the two may not be skill set every time difference between two is who is ready to put in more efforts who is ready to put more hard work so i think uh, this is as simple as that but people don't want to accept that you are talking about accountability be accountable to yourself absolutely parents Choose and students path. yeah do your own path and then then put in the best effort you do nobody is forcing you to say that do je or neat or ca or icwa or you know i want to open a shop which is which is your call but if you know we open a shop the shopkeeper does not have a sunday trust me it's a far far more difficult task than we think from a distance any job agree yeah. agree with you. no i i have to ask you two more important questions with you and uh, and before i close uh, i don't know how you're going to answer this what's your knowing our education system and how we've grown up and you know that we've achieved a few things what is your 30 second guide to happiness happiness um choose your path and run you'll be always happy uh, choose your path not what your parents say not you know anybody else says choose your path and take your time if you're in 8th grade wait for 9th wait for 10th but whatever is your path 
you know when sorry i'm taking more than 30 seconds but no, my, take more than 30 seconds that's <laughs> just uh, that's so my, <laughs> my daughter was uh, in 10th grade and both of us were uh, one evening she came back from school and i came back from office and i saw her sleeping and there's like three months to the board exam so i said what happened she just got tired i said uh, why she says uh, i went to play basketball today and uh, i said no but you enjoy playing basketball so this is now i'm physically tired somehow we ended up saying that you know uh, maybe for a few months thakna mana hai so this statement she wrote on the board that thakna mana hai and says i chose the subject i chose tenth board what i want to study so i can't be you know nobody should follow up to me to say that hey padho 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 types so i think and she she is in us now and she is doing so well but i think what we agree is that you choose a path for yourself we all will support you but then you can't get tired every now and then it is a tough journey but you know it's just like a mountaineering guy you know climbing mount everest definitely climbing process is very tough but the destination at the end is so much fun to be with that you feel happy every moment every step you go closer to that no that's a phenomenal analogy and i'm glad you said that uh, choose your own path and uh, do what you want but never never tire from what you want to do that's phenomenal Absolutely. you can take breaks but never tire that's a difference right Absolutely. okay last question people who inspired you and books that you're reading that you'd recommend to our audience um i think three people inspired me most uh, Just to tell you, I'm a second generation uh, literate guy. So my grandmom was illiterate. Sorry to say that. Uh, my mom is tenth pass, but uh, both of them have huge impact on my career. Uh, I was telling on Women's Day to to women in the company saying that my grandma will make me sit at six thirty and say, "Bad job, padho." I don't know what are you going to study, but uh, you study. i think uh, my mom did the same uh, she didn't know what i was studying but she ensured that i just follow a routine basic hygiene i think uh, i i respect both of them a lot uh, the the other person whom i respect a lot is j krishnamurthy i have been inspired by his teachings and the way he he have dealt with the topic i say you know if you if you start studying i think after swami vivekananda if there was any living legend which we could have seen nearby was j krishnamurthy because he has he has taken education to a new dimension uh, i think think there are many people who could he could take it there and then among all the people whom i have worked in my life my uh, first boss has been always been a very inspiring guy he is now in us is the, the one in the tata group or tata group yeah fantastic he <laughs> amazing uh, i think i i sometimes try to copy him uh, particularly the way i meet youngsters the way i uh, work with them uh, i try to copy him but i have learned a lot from him the books a uh, lot of books have jake shamurthy have inspired me but the book which i am uh, presently reading or binge reading is 10x rule uh, i think that's an amazing book of saying that don't fall off here and there stay focused and then uh, recently read a very off beat book which is called i'm a big fan of malcolm gladwell so i uh, read a book called talking to strangers which is i read that brilliant yeah, <laughs> brilliant book i should have read that you relate to and and the way the book starts you know uh, i am really impressed with that uh, person how he has taken data and human behavior together amazing Yeah, how do we actually tell stories to each other, right? And Absolutely. here we are doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Ujjwal Singh, CEO and President of Infinity Learn. Uh, if you're a parent, go check him out. If you're a student, do check him out. If you're a VC, why not go just call Ujjwal, right? That's the best way to go about it. Thank you for being on the UpstreamLife dot com, and we'll see you all soon. Lovely talking to you, Ujjwal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate. It.